Hey everyone, it's Jeffrey again uh, here for this year's last tips and tricks video for the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. As I promised in my last video, this video is a Q&A session where I'm answering some of the questions that you guys left in the comments section below of last video. Thank you guys so much for leaving questions and I will try to answer as many of them as I can today. So we got this nice bowl full of you guys' questions here. Um, this is actually a measuring bowl which I use to measure the amount of tears I make every time I edit a video. So sometimes I get pretty close to the top. Let's, so let's start with the first question um, by Kermina Youssef. And also I apologize ahead of time if I butcher all your names, but she asks, hey, I was thinking about explaining my idea in a form of like a short play or a conversation between two personalities. Does this sound childish? In other words, can we make videos for children? Um, no, this actually does not sound childish. Previous finalists have made videos where um, the same person plays multiple characters who talk to each other. It's basically whatever you think works best for you and is the most creative in your explanations about your topic. How do you know if your topic is difficult enough and is it okay to mention scientific terms or will it just intimidate some viewers with limited scientific background? Thanks. Also, how many words was in your script last year? Okay, um, scientific terms are important to have in your video because um, there are names for the things that you're talking about, but it's best to include descriptions for things that people might not know and also try to keep balance between um, explaining new terms to people and also using terms that people already know. So it's basically about striking that balance. And I do not know how many words were in my script last year. I will put them somewhere above me. Wow, that's a lot of words. Okay. JG asks, I am making a fully animated video, then should I be adding more sound effects to keep the viewer engaged, or what else can I do? Yes, yeah, sound effects are really important, especially if you have any animation in your video because it adds the extra grounding to your animations. Some other things you can do is make sure you have a voiceover where you're talking about it, or if you want, you can actually include yourself in the video because it's often really helpful for people to be able to see your face and just adds that little extra bit of personality to your video. All right. Luis Felipe says, can 18 year olds too also participate in the Breakthrough Junior Challenge? Yes, but you have to still be 18 by October 1st. Wait, where did you put your phone? Underneath your shirt? Where exactly, lol? So this is a very interesting question that I was trying to avoid for the longest time. But uh, I suppose because I love you guys so much, I'll tell you. So I filmed two videos. The first year I had my phone underneath my shirt. And if you're asking where underneath your shirt, I actually taped it to my chest, which was extremely uncomfortable. It worked, but it was really, it really sucked and people were watching, so it, it was hard. It, it was definitely probably the hardest part about making that video. Uh, in the second year, I didn't talk about this much last year, but I was actually um, smart enough to get a lavalier mic, which is like a small microphone you can clip onto yourself. Uh, it was a lot easier to do it, but if I had the option between not using good audio or taping my phone to my chest, I would have probably taped my phone to my chest. I would suggest doing anything else though if you can okay. all right these are so many questions guys question how will you go about using transitions and how do you make them well a lot of editing softwares actually come with pre-made transitions for example iMovie has a whole lot of pre-made transitions some that look better than others um, making them is a more difficult matter some so animation softwares or editing softwares aren't able to make transitions but other more advanced ones you can um, i suggest going online if you have a more advanced software and looking some youtube tutorials up that's a little bit too long of a tutorial to include in this video all right devin asks hey jeffrey thanks again for the video did you use stock vectors for your animation or did you draw them yourself are we allowed to use legally obtained stock vectors thank you well you are allowed to use legally obtained stock vectors as long as they're royalty free and you're given permission to use them. Personally, in my video, I drew everything by myself. Uh, in After Effects, it wasn't actually that bad because mostly they were just shapes and I just added effects to them. But for the most part, I would say try to make as many as you can on your own just to play on the safe side because when you actually, if you actually manage to get into the top 30, you have to send a list of sources and um, assets that you didn't make. So, um, it just is a lot easier in the end game to make your own stuff, but don't feel too compelled to make your own stuff. You can find stuff online if you're allowed to use it. When I will record, even using a separate microphone or my phone, the wind noise is still really prominent, making my voice sound far away. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. So if you actually have a microphone, there are these things called, um, I think they're called dead wombats or dead, or dead cats, which are basically windshields that try to muffle sound. Um, the closer your phone is to your voice, the better, because obviously you'll pick up your voice better. And um, in post, you can also try to remove some of that uh, wind noise using 
free um, audio softwares like Audacity. There are a lot of tutorials online on how you can remove background noise in your videos. How did you change your filmmaking process or in fact your entire process of production of science communication videos from your submission from the challenge back in 2018 to the one which you won in 2019? In a nutshell, what did you learn from the first video that helped improve the second? That's a really good question that I don't have an answer to. I'm just kidding. Um, I think that the biggest change I had from my first year to my second year is I put a lot more planning into the second year ahead of time. Even though I actually had less days to complete my second one, I had an overall better idea of how much time it would take to make a project like this. I also think that for my first year, I chose a topic that was a little bit too broad and didn't have as many satisfying answers to because it is a theory that's still being discussed and um, has a lot of questions going around it, but my second year's submission had um, a lot of concrete science behind it and has already been applied. In general, I just think my second year was cleaner than my first year's. I spent more time instead of adding a lot of animation to just make the animation I had clean and um, I guess aesthetically pleasing. Naomi asks, do you know any free animation softwares? Um, there are some free ones, I don't know them by name, but Google is a great resource for that. I am so nervous in front of the camera. Can you give some tips? Yes, um, being camera shy is something that's like perfectly normal, but what I do to really calm myself down is to just remember that I am speaking to a camera right now, not a real person. The camera has no feelings. It doesn't judge you for who you are. It doesn't see any of your failures or weaknesses. It's just a camera. So I would just try to like really see the camera as something that's really capturing how the world sees you. Um, okay, actually, take some deep breaths before you do your recordings. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to like run around and do some exercise so you feel more like energetic and a little bit more relaxed when you're about to record. And practice in front of the mirror, practice in front of other people because um, when you're actually recording, you are recording to a camera, but you can also imagine that being an audience. So you just wanna be, make sure you know your script or what you're talking about very well. Being prepared really does wonders for your on-camera performance. How many recordings have you deleted? You have no idea it was traumatizing. Awesome Boss asks, do you know if memes are copyrighted? Um, as a connoisseur of, of high arts myself, um, I'm not exactly sure if memes are copyrighted, but um, that's actually a really good question. I think you shouldn't do the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. You should probably actually just make a video about um, if memes are copyrightable or not, and I will subscribe to your channel and watch that video immediately. I'm going to participate in the Breakthrough Junior Challenge 2020, and I'm wondering if we're allowed to explain certain concepts of physics that just exist in theories but don't have experimental evidence like string theory. I'd be grateful to hear from you. Yes, try choosing a topic that has scientific evidence behind it or is applicable to everyday life, preferably even both of them, because it's just a lot more satisfying and relatable for the audience to see it go around in everyday life or at least know that it takes place in our actual world. So it's just easier to explain and it leaves a more satisfying conclusion. Annabeth asks, are mathematical paradoxes a good topic? Probably, I'm not very good at mathematics, so I can't really like say that, but um, if you think it's interesting and you can explain it well, then it is always going to be a good topic. Best of luck. Courtney asks, how did you organize your information to fit into the time limit of the video? Well, I recorded it ahead of time in like my phone, so I would just say my script into my phone and I try to have it so the, uh, the recording hit around two minutes and 55 seconds, which would give me around five seconds of wiggle room in the actual video. Um, it's best to always like at least say your script and record it just to time how long it is and to also make sure you're not speaking too fast or too slow. How do you recommend recording yourself for the majority of the video, including diagrams and animation to demonstrate or can you animate with voiceover throughout the entire process similar to a TED Ed video? Yes, you can actually animate your entire video and just do a voiceover. However, I'd actually recommend you being in your video for parts of it, like your actual face. It just makes the video a lot more personal. So for the majority of my video, I actually shot it on my camera and recorded the audio on my phone and I would just animate over certain clips. So that's just how I did it. I think it's the most efficient way because that way, if you want to build the entire video together, you can find out what you're missing and what you need to animate over. Did you read off a script while filming? No, I memorized the script ahead of time. It was really annoying to memorize the script ahead of time, but I think it's worth it to memorize the script because it just makes you look better prepared. And um, yeah, it just makes you look better prepared. Unlike this right now where I'm not reading a script. Jia Hui says, lol, I should procrastinate more to get all your tips. No, you shouldn't. 
Procrastination is one of the worst things that you can do. But you can always like and subscribe. One Wish says, hi, Jeffrey Chen. Hi, One Wish. And finally, Monique says, do you have any advice on how to maintain a three-minute script? How can one best summarize all the information they know about a concept theory in this somewhat short amount of time without missing any information? Um, the best way to do that is try to write down your entire topic in two sentences. So last year, my entire topic was basically can be boiled down to neutrino astronomy is a new form of astronomy that can allow us to observe the universe in a different way than we usually do. So yeah, you just need to have your main idea and then have some evidence to back that up and you're pretty much golden. Um, maintaining a three minute script, record it ahead of time, like do a voiceover and time it just so you make sure you don't go over and that's basically all you have to do. All right, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I answered as many of these questions as I could that I found on the Q&A page. Um, that's basically it for my this year's Breakthrough Junior Tips and Tricks video series. I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, my channel is now going to go back to its regular content. By that meaning just random videos that I think are fun. But if you want, you can stick around and just watch these videos. I spent a lot of time on them, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Feel free to keep watching the videos on my channel, and next year I will hopefully be making more Breakthrough Junior tips and tricks. Uh, for now, I will be going. Good luck on the competition. You guys will do great, and I will see you next time. Bye.